There's a very good reason I put this question in here because it came from someone who was listening to my podcast, which of course gives me an excuse to shamelessly plug my podcast. Risks with indexes. There's a very good reason I put this question in here because it came from someone who was listening to my podcast, which of course gives me an excuse to shamelessly plug my podcast. So just any podcasting platform, look for the spoken nerd and you'll find my podcast. But <laughs> enough shameful advertising. I was listening to your podcast. Did I mention my pod? No, sorry. I was listening to your podcast and you repeatedly said, people seem to be unaware how how high risk it is to add an index on a system can you elaborate on that and how to lower that risk let me explain why it's risky this is the thing that blows my mind when people go add indexes on their system is you might have a piece of sql that's performing poorly and you want to actually put an index on it to make it better i know of almost no systems in fact i'm confident to say no systems that have a table that only has a single sql run against it in fact, the only tables that do so are typically so small, they're reference tables, and the only thing you ever do on is a primary key lookup to get some metadata. Primary keys are already there. You don't need indexes on those tables. The only tables we have any indexes on generally are the larger, more actively used tables. And rest assured, there is normally a myriad of different SQL statements that run against those tables. To focus on just one of those queries and say, let's bang an index on a table, means you could have literally changed the entire performance profile of your application in the blink of an eye. You could have made 100 SQL statements dramatically faster, and you'll be a hero. But you could have also made 99 statements dramatically slower, and you'll be a villain. And it seems an incredible you know, risky roll of the dice to do that just because you have one statement that's running slowly. One of the whole design patterns behind 19C's automatic indexing was an acknowledgement of the incredible risk in building indexes. Unless you've been living on another planet, you've probably seen this pentagram or pen, you know, um, about how 19C automatic indexing works. We find bad SQLs, we put some indexes on without actually building them. We see if they're gonna help the optimizer. If they do, we go build them as invisible. Then we actually do some test executions and then we actually activate them. And it does this every 15 minutes. It does it with all sorts of impressive, impressive smarts. It tries to consolidate indexes. It monitors them for use. It'll drop them if they're unused. It's an incredibly cool piece of tech. So we can follow its lead. In terms of trying to mitigate the risk, whether you're on 19C or not, whether you get access to automatic indexing or not, because predominantly it's on the autonomous systems and exadata, if you follow its lead, you can actually hopefully get close to that similar kind of arrangement where you're minimizing the risk of adding indexes. And, and this is the typical scenario you're gonna face. Someone's gonna to come to you, whether it's a developer, DBA colleague, et cetera, and they're gonna say, look, we got a query on my six terabyte table. It's running really, really slow. I've got an idea for an index. And being cautious as we are as IT professionals, your response is probably gonna be, is it definitely going to speed things up? And the response you're going to get is this. I think so. Now, this is not me crapping all over the person who was asking for an index. The reality is, back in the day when databases were smaller and budgets were bigger, we would have a 100 gigabyte production database and you'd have a 100 gigabyte test database and a 100 gigabyte development database. People understood the importance of having real sized non-production environments through performance testing on. Nowadays, in these great worlds of you know, continuous deployment, continuous delivery, every developer has their own database, et cetera, the enormous benefits of that flexibility and turnaround time have come with an enormous drawback as well, is that we generally don't get full-size testing environments. So I fully defend any developer that says, all I can do is I think so, because it's so hard for them nowadays because we have these enormous production databases and they never get a similar size one to do any kind of performance testing on. They have their own little sandbox, et cetera. That flexibility has come with that price that we don't ever see performance problems until production, which is obviously not the best time to be seeing them. 
But one of the things you can do is a thing called virtual indexes. Now, I stress this is not supported. It's actually a facility that's uh, used by Enterprise Manager back in the day to see if indexes should be added. You can actually take advantage of it. Just be aware that it is unsupported. You're on your own here. You can create an index on a table and specify this keyword called no segment. And what that does, it creates the database dictionary entries for that index. It'll be in user indexes, user in columns, etc. It's all there. The only thing that's not there is the index data. It doesn't go build the index. The index looks in the database like it exists. You can think of it like as an unusable index. It's simply there by definition only. Of course, you can't use it. It can't be used for performance benefits. So what's the reason we have one? You can now go and run a generate stats command. Notice this is not gather. This is a generate stats on the table that you just created that index on. It uses the statistics on the columns and the tables to come up with a representative state of statistics that would be there on that index. That's why we call it generate stats, not gather. It looks at the number of rows in each column, the number of rows in the table and says, okay, based on that, the index stats for this fictional index would probably be this. Obviously you can't really use this index yet, but what you can do is you can tell the database to generate an execution plan as if that index really existed. And I do that by doing this setting, alter session set use no segment indexes equals true. Then I can run an execution plan. Here's my query. And I can see, is my new index going to be used? And this is critical because don't forget, just because an index is there doesn't mean the optimizer is going to use it. And it will be a terrible waste of time to go create an index on a six terabyte table for the optimizer not to use it on your query anyway. So in this case, this is a great way of getting a good level of confidence that if I go ahead and spend that time building this index, the optimizer is indeed going to use it. So I like this. This is a risk mitigation strategy. Similarly, you can now run other queries in your system on this same table that you don't have any performance problems with to see if they'll use the new index. Because if they do, you might introduce a regression. If they don't use it, once again, you have that confidence that they're actually not going to uh, be impacted. So I like this idea because it costs you nothing. It's simply a data dictionary definition. It doesn't cost you anything to, to do anything. Some additional mitigations. Once you've done this, then you can actually go ahead and build that index, but build it as invisible. By building it as invisible, no other session can see it. And you can actually add a hint. I think it's called use invisible index um, to just the query that you want to improve. Therefore, once again, mitigating the risk of other queries being impacted. You can also set that at session level using an alter session. You can say use invisible indexes equals true. So it's a nice way of being able to, once again, make sure that the index you just built doesn't you know, wreak a path of destruction for the rest of your application. The other thing you can do is evaluate the scope of impact. This is one of the queries I like running if I'm going to create an index. I'll do select, go get all the SQL statements that are reference my table this table called emp. If I'm going to create an index on the table called on the table called emp, I want to find every existing SQL statement in my application that currently accesses the emp table in VLL SQL plan. By doing so, I can then say, okay, let's now do that testing against each one of those. Or I could do something the other way around. I could use SQL plan management and say for every single statement that references that table, that I'm not tuning, I'm tuning this particular one over here, I'll use SPM to lock down the existing plan for all of them, except my problem statement. Therefore, now when I make that index active or visible, it doesn't matter because none of these people are going to use it anyway. And then I can once again, over time, go look at each individual and decide if I want to ease up that SQL plan management plan. If that sounds like a cool idea, that's exactly what Act Automatic Indexing does. It uses SQL plan management to ensure we don't get regressions. So hopefully that makes sense.